Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we're going to talk about breaking down your camper when you're at a campsite here. We are here right now at this uh, beautiful location here in the UP of Michigan, right on Lake Superior. Uh, we did spur of the moment trip, so we couldn't get down to lakefront access, which uh, you can see the lake is right down there. It's Lake Superior. Um, through there, through the trees, you can see it. But uh, when we come again, we will be down on those sites. Like I said, spur of the moment, but it's really nice setup, and you can get right down on the water. But well, today we're going to talk about tear down basically and uh, so first thing I do when I come out here Tina usually handles the inside stuff as far as making sure pots and are in the right spots and nothing's gonna uh, full you know cr come crashing down so she's in there putting things away um, but what we do is I usually fold up the, the, the mat the camp mat the chairs the table that kind of stuff first I get that out of the way then the next thing I want to do is just double check everything before I get rolling my stabilizers which you can see we use ours in the winter too and they get pretty beat up they get a lot of salt on them they get a lot of crap on them um so you can see i actually already lubed it if you look close you can see that gob of lube right there that super lube and i've already sprayed them with wd-40 coated the bolts and stuff with wd-40 uh real quick you can see the head of that's coated with wd-40 and i put super lube on each side of that that just helps kind of make those uh last a little bit longer they're a wearable item something you're going to end up eventually having to redo and throw out but um i just use that i keep a tool bucket right here in here and it's got all my stuff in here paper towels handy um but i use you know wd-40 and somewhere in here should be the super lube i just threw it back in here um somewhere down in here uh probably under here right here but this stuff i just use that right there anything's good any kind of lithium grease or your multi-purpose grease but um so i just throw that um, I put that on all the jack stands. I also put it on my hitch. So I, I make that my first point. You can see I put it right there on there just to make it there. Now I know on these equalizers and stuff, you're not supposed to lube uh, the torsion bars here, these things. But you can see I put a little swipe right there, just a very small one. I do that on purpose because then as I'm turning and these bars are moving back and forth, these big bars right here, these steel bars go in there and they connect from that socket two right here and i put just that little bitty dab of grease in there just to keep them from uh from making noise usually i also put one right here too which i actually forgot to do i'm gonna have to do but just a little smidge just keeps that squeaking and creaking down so that's something that i do um but anyway so once i have that done and i have those set my next step is to get up on top of the roof and make sure that I have none of the stuff. You can see we are under pine trees here. So there's gonna be pine needles and look at all the pine cones on the ground. You do not wanna catch one of these pine cones in your slide up there. So I have my ladder right here and I'm gonna go up there. I got my brush, which is sitting right there and I'm gonna pop up here. Let's take a look and see, not too shabby. So it's not a big deal, but me being anal like I am, I'm still gonna brush that off. So I'm gonna use my brush and, and pull that stuff off there. You can see I got a pine cone up there on the roof sitting right up there above the slide but um but i'm gonna sweep this stuff off here just to be on the safe side this is gonna make just uh keep my seals that's gonna keep all these rubber seals that we have right in here all that stuff and the seal on the top from getting damaged uh from from things getting in there so that'll be the next step we're gonna do uh is get that done and set and then i also then what i want to do is before Actually, I'm going to do that, and then I'll walk you through the rest here as we go. So I'll be right back. There we go. You can see, slide all cleaned off, pull set. So now that's all done. We're ready to move on to the next thing, and uh, we have that finished. All right, now we got my uh, got slide all cleared off. Time to pack up my ladder. If you haven't watched my video on this ladder, you can definitely watch it. It's the best ladder in the world for a camper because it is a full-size ladder, six-foot ladder. But it also folds up like that right there and then fits right in the bumper just like that so it makes that nice and simple and set Okay, now that we got the, the slide cleared off, that done, next thing we want to do is start breaking down water stuff and things like that. Hey T, hit that water heater button. See, we have on our panel right there, there's a water heater switch. She just turned it off. So now we don't want that. You want to always make sure that switch is off before you come over here and do anything with this. Now what I'm going to do is come over here to the hot water heater. I'm going to open this. And again, this is just me being extra cautious and anal on this stuff. But I'm going to open this up, set that right there. 
I have a switch right here. I am also killing that switch. So now it is off here and there. And then that way when I come back out and I go to set up, when I connect the water, I can hit this and check and make sure I have water in my tank and water pressure before I turn that on and before I turn that one on. And I can also prime the lines through the stove in there to make sure I got propane actually in the lines beforehand. So that's kind of my, uh, my order of doing stuff on this because that's the only place you can really get in trouble. You turn this thing on here and the switch inside and you don't have water in there you'll cook those elements very quickly and uh you'll be heading to the dealership so you don't want to do that so that's my kind of my fail safe method of doing that so now i have that off i have the switch off in there so i'm set right there so i can take care of that now i'm going to kill the propane this is the next thing i'm going to do so i'm going to come over here uh to the tanks probably have to set you actually i'll be right back i'm gonna have to lift two hands to lift this Okay, got cover off on the propane. You can see it's green pointing to this tank. That means that one's on. I'm going to kill this and make sure that's off. That should switch that over. This is now off. That one's dead. Actually, I got to remember to refill that tank. But now propane is off. So I can put that cover back on, but that is technically all done. So we are, water is, is basically off. Um, as far as hot water goes, we got the hot water heater all set and taken care of. Double checking my switch in there is good, and it is. So we are set. Now we are moving around to the drain tanks, which this box right here, this is my black water stuff, okay? I don't want to have my sewer pipe like you're seeing here. I don't want to have that sewer pipe and my black water rinse holes and this slinky and all the stuff that relates to sewer. I don't want to have it in my main compartment here where i have everything else plus our bed is right here the bed's right above this i don't want to i don't want to deal with that even in a, in a separate container so i actually mounted that box on the back to make it where i can put all of that sewer pipe and all that stuff and all my my black water flush holes everything like that all goes right inside this tank that is mounted as you can see with some brackets some u-bolts I just made it, mounted it right on here, but that sits right on the back end. So that's where that's at now. But So now I'm ready to flush um, and drain the tanks on here. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to do the black water tank, which is your sewer, your toilet. That's the only thing that's in here is your toilet. That's your black water one. Notice I put this two um, pieces of uh, gray uh, duct tape here. This is just so my wife knows which one because they, they should have named it black and gray But they name it wastewater and sewage. Really? Really? I mean, that's the, the dumbest combination I could ever have seen But so anyway, I put that gray piece of tape on there so that uh, they know that this is gray water tank Okay, this is the black water. This is your toilet. This is your showers and your sinks and your bathroom um, All that stuff So we want to hit the black water tank first because then it's going to drain all that stuff out Then you can run your gray water, which is usually just soap and shampoo and stuff like that to help finish that up so we're gonna go ahead and hit that and that's gonna start draining we're gonna hit with pine cones here falling on us so now you can see it flowing there and that is now draining that black water tank is draining out so we're gonna let that do its thing we are gonna leave the water hooked up here temporarily but then we're gonna switch that over to a black water flush here and, and make sure we get that all spun out and everything perfect in there before we're done so while that's doing that we just let that run we also have another one here. So when I'm all done and that whole thing is all clean, I'm going to take that connection down there for that hose, bring it over here, connect it here, and then drain this. This is basically my kitchen sink. That's the only one that's really on there is the kitchen sink. But we do got to drain that one as well too. So we want to clear all those out really well. And then uh, we'll be back when we're ready for the next step. All right, getting ready to pull the water. This is your water line for your fresh water hookup, okay? Or city water, there's your fresh water tank if you were to actually put water in the tank and pour it in there. We do that when we're boondocking, but here we're hooked up to their water. Now, when you do that, I run it in this system. I got the filter on there. This is a water filter. This is a water regulator, this little cap right here. This little piece, that section, regulates the water pressure to about 60 PSI. So if you hit one, it's pretty high water. It's not going to damage your pipes or blow anything apart. Um, so it's just a nice little addition, but I'm going to take this whole set off. Now notice the blue hose is my water line. That orange one is my black water black tank flush line which we're going to hook up and it's going to flush out everything out of there before i disconnect this one and make sure it's all good so we're going to switch that over um, and then what you want to do is after i'm done with that when i take it off i'm going to wipe these with a disinfectant wipe around those threads just to keep it nice and clean but that's what we're going to do right now so i'm going to get these hooked up all right i have my 
water line this is my fresh water line you can see i'm just letting it drip out that's why i got it set right there so it's just dripping clearing that out of the filter the line's already been cleared then i can shove that back in here but now i'm a black water rinse hose hooked up now when i turn this on that's going to help clean everything out of there so i have still i still have both uh uh, both valves open come over here turn this on You can hear it in there And it is just working at that black water tank and cleaning that spraying it around in there cleaning it out good pretty soon We should start seeing sure should start coming right through that elbow It's basically just make sure there's nothing stuck in there. No anything, you know toilet paper noise it just cleans everything out really good and flushes it And let's see Yep, and you can see it flowing right there, starting to come out. So it's doing its job. So we're going to let that do its job for a few minutes. And uh, then we're going to switch this over and drain the shower tank is the last thing. The reason I do that tank last is that sink has got water in there, soap and water and stuff like that. And it's perfect for rinsing this tube out when I'm all done. So after this is finished, I'll close those valves, disconnect this, reconnect it over there, and then drain that. And that'll be fresh, good, well, you know, sink water that will clean out that finish on that pipe. All right, well, we let that flush there for a minute, and that's doing that flush. I'm going to hit these cables real quick with just a little RV slide slide lube. I just, uh, just a precautionary thing, so I just hit a little bit of that cable like that, just so that as it goes in, it's going to do a nice job of uh, lubing that up. So I just hit those real fast to hit the top ones, the bottom ones. So just like that, just a quick little slide lube on there. Just like that, protects those, hit the top cables too. I actually hit those already when I had the ladder over there. So I'm already set on those. Um, but just, um, you know, keeps everything working like it's supposed to and keeps it nice and neat. All right, now that we got it, we're hooked up to the main tank here. So you know too, I'm wearing gloves when I'm transferring that. I keep rubber gloves in a Ziploc bag up there, but I can't use the camera when I'm using them. But, uh, so you want rubber gloves, which make life a lot easier, especially dealing with the black tank. But uh, here, you notice I didn't use the slinky, that, uh, that I call it a slinky, but that guide that actually creates that downward pressure you need for the flow of that but here where i'm just rinsing out my kitchen sink um i don't i just use it like this and then what i'll do is i'll start lifting this and walk the hose so that it drains everything out of the hose uh so it works pretty good but you can use that if you want to you don't have to completely up to you i'm just too lazy to reset it so i let it run down let it drain and then when it's done when it's done draining out of here i just start picking this up at this end and working all the fluid and all that soap and water out this way so it actually exits the hose that's basically my setup for it all right there's all my wastewater stuff all packed up right there my slinky my main hose my flush washer my flush hose everything's right there we lock this up and that set off the lock so i can close it and that is now locked up and all set. Then all I gotta do is I'm gonna put my gloves back on so I can put the valve caps back on. And uh, we are set and put the cap back on the sewer. And we are set and that is done. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually, I'm saving the power cord for last because we're gonna use that to put the slide in. Next thing we're gonna do is the stabilizers. Now on the stabilizers here, if you don't have one of these drill bits, get one. It is a 19 millimeter drill bit for your stabilizers. Plugs right into that right there into your drill gun but watch how nice and easy this is first doing the hand crank done sweet and easy just makes it life so much simpler uh, rather than sitting there cranking those things by hand or maybe you have power ones i don't have the power ones but that's it just like that hit that put that right in there Just makes life a lot easier. Hit all those, go around, hit them. I'm done. So, I mean, it's actually quicker than even having electric ones. Electric ones may be nice, but these, again, are a wearable item. They are going to go bad on you. So, they wear out and things happen. So, I like the standard ones and this because it's just quick and easy. Done. Like that. Nothing to it. Then we're going to pick up all of our blocks and get those stored away. Okay, as I come to the inside, important, make sure your thermostat is off. 
Make sure all your switches are off. Make sure doors are all shut and locked so nothing's going to be there. Make sure in the bedroom everything is set. Make sure everything is good. Here we have the chairs are locked down. We have this protecting that strap or that buckle from hurting anything on the chairs. We have that all set. The fr uh, fridge needs to be turned off. Right now it is still on auto. I want it on off so that the fridge is off. I want everything set. Double check. Nothing is in the way of the slides down here. That stuff is fine right there. These little things like this, a pen, this will disappear. I want it, that goes actually with me on my setup stuff here for work. Slide that in. There we go. But so make sure everything's good. Make sure everything's tucked away where it should be. Windows are all shut. Blinds are set. Everything is good. So just double check everything inside. That stuff's all good. And then check this corner of the slide. Perfect. We are good. So now we can bring the slide in. And I checked it outside to make sure as well too, so everything is good and safe out there, nothing in the way. So you bring your slide in. You'll hear it when it's done. Listen. That's it. Slides in. Everything's set. Her purse is good. That stuff's good. I'm going to come back and grab this here. Actually, right now, because there is... See, this was afraid of. One-handed. This isn't going to work. So I'm going to come back and grab that. But understand, there's some things that you cannot do. One of them is you do not want to lift these steps until the last thing. Otherwise, as you're adjusting your trailer up and down, you can be bending those. So do not lift your steps, if they're like mine, until the end. Also, do not... Go hooking up the trailer until you have everything else done slide in that stuff set because again is i have to lift this up and put it on there and then lower and raise it to get the bars on you will bend those steps so make sure that is the last thing you're going to do so right now i'm going to close up the inside and make sure it's all set and we'll be right back always make sure when you close this up and you're done lock these and then also put this bar on there but i can't tell you how many times when we're driving uh long distances especially around the chicago area with the crappy roads there that this door will actually pop open so make sure that this crossbar is up and turned and locked because that is going to keep that door from opening down the road mandatory always make sure that's that way do not trust just the door locks like i said these things get they're basically getting beaten like a house in a hurricane as they go down the road you don't have that on there there's a good chance that door could pop open all right, everything else is basically done except for just uh, pulling the chucks, but I got to pull my power cord. Now, on the power cord here, uh, you should be running a protector, a surge protector, like I am. That's what this black box is right here. So we put this up. They should usually go in and stay like that. What I want to do is I want to kill my 30 amp breaker, which is what I'm running right here. See how I got the lights on in here? everything there this thing is amazing i love it tells you right down here exactly what's going on by the lights so it's a great setup <clears throat> but what i want to do is i want to kill the 30 amp on there then i can unplug this and then i can unplug this from the surge protector I'm trying this one-handed here hang on Ugh. like that and then i have my cords so i have my surge protector there close this back up for the next person Come over here and then pull your cord, roll it and put it away and you are good to go. All right, now we're ready to hook up. I have the ball under there. Notice I have my hitch pin out and I have this pulled back. Hey, okay, there's two positions at your lock. I have that pulled back. You always wanna make sure that's pulled back and then I can go ahead and drop my hitch on there. If you get this ball, see my line up there? If I get that ball too far back, it will hit this hitch pin and lift that and it won't work right. So that's where a lot of people run into errors at. So make sure you have it so it's up towards the front of this so it'll grab and fall on. If this is back, too far back to this plate, it will hit this plate and will not fit in there. So just watch that as you're doing it. It's like that with every single trailer out there. But see, so you can see it falling right in and on. Now, what I wanna do is I want to get that so it's on there. Now I can see it start moving the truck, okay? So now we're going to lock this. Drop that in like that. Put our hitch pin in so that that is now officially locked. Now I need to get my bars on. In order to get those bars on, I have to lift the actual truck up for the weight distribution. So I'm going to go, now that that's on, I'm going back up. Then we're going to lift this up and then we're going to set our bars on there. This equalizer for hitch is amazing. The, the stability you get from this thing is just incredible. So I'm lifting the whole truck up actually right now by that hitch is actually lifting the truck off the ground. Now I'm going to get those set and I'll be right back. 
All right, we got the bars in for the equalizer hitch. They're set right there. Now I have it up high enough. What I gotta do is get this bar on there. So I'm gonna just swing this over, slide it right on top of there, drop in my pin. There it is, that locks that side down. And that is gonna give this sway control, weight distribution, sway controls handled through these torque pulls. This thing's just amazing. So now we're gonna go around on the other side, hit the other one. We're gonna lock this one in, same way. Pull the pin, set that right there for a minute. Pull the bar over and slide it right up on there. Lock the bar in. Again, one-handed here, hang on. There we go, I gotta flip that down. There that, that holds that. Now I can actually take the weight off of the hitch completely and, or off of the, the uh, jack and put it all right on the truck. You can see those are locking in, everything's locking in. You'll start to see the base plate come up. And then we can take the, we'll hook up the safety chains and the disconnect and uh, then the only thing we got to do after we get done with that is we got to pull the wheel chucks and then we are on the road. And then the last thing, pull your leveling blocks here. Somebody else, this Coke can was here. This is not ours, but we are going to take that with us. But then you want to grab your level blocks and uh, put them in and then just do a quick walk around and make sure everything, all cabinets are all closed and locked. I'm going to set that right there. But that's it, just double check everything, double check your connections, make sure that your valves are closed, make sure your plugs are on, make sure your jacks are up on there all the way around, just walk around, make sure your front door is locked, just double check everything on there, make sure it's all 100% good, and uh, then basically you are ready uh, to load up and uh, to load up and roll out. So we got everything else set, check your tire pressure just to make sure everything's good, and uh, we are now good to go. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more stuff soon, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.